You may be already familiar with this frequency separation techniques. If not, we're going to look a little bit closer and see how does it work. So right here we have an image. And will you notice right in this area we have it um, kind of changing contrast between, uh, for example, balloon, the overall shape and other ones. However, if we get closer to the some areas, for example, right here with the skin, you can see as a skin going, we have it more change of this contrast area. So we have it more between darker and lighter areas. So in this case, what we refer when a low frequency, it's overall a bigger shape change in contrast area. And when we refer to high frequency, we refer to more faster change, like for example, this hair area or a skin area. It does help if you want to look when we switch to black and white, you can see more when we remove the all colors, you can see we have it now light area, dark area, light area, dark area. Again, if we come closer to the hair, you can see it's changing quite a bit often contrast areas between those um, each hair piece. So in this case, we can take them and separate that frequencies on separate layers and use them after to manipulate on the general larger shapes or skins. As a retouching, we can do a lot of stuff with this. So for example, we can go remove some skin um, properties or maybe even hair, but we still preserve all of this texture of the skin that reside below. So it's give it us more flexibility on what we're doing. The one way to actually remove high frequency from image is by using image blur. So in this case, we actually remove all these details from the skin. And next, by using apply image, we can go ahead and subtract some of this information or add and separate this way. So in some cases, we will create one layer where we will have it, um, our blur without details, we'll have it another layer where we have it higher quality or of higher frequency, for example, right here, a piece of skin, where we can separate this. And we will create these two layers for this example, where we have a low frequency image, and we have a skin texture or other ones as a high frequency. Again, as a high frequency frequency and low frequency, it's refer to this contrast area changing between elements. So on the pixel level, you can see it change quite a bit fast. And this one change not as fast. So right here, we have our image. And let's call this image um, low frequency. And we'll go ahead and create it duplicate it. And this will be high frequency. Okay, so you'll notice on a low frequency what we want to do, it is blur out. So we want to remove some of these details before we process. We have several options we can do, we can go inside the blur, and we can use in as in blur. However, if we use Gaussian blur, let's look on this, you'll notice right here edges become quite a bit blur and they will bleed out. I'm not necessarily want to do this, I want to preserve some of those edges. To do this, we'll go use surface blur. You notice with the surface blur, we kind of start preserving some of those edges on the side. So how does select what amount of the radius of blur you needed? And it's easy, uh, kind of if you refer to this image right here, you can see how much you want to preserve based on a skin. So for example, maybe these details is big enough. On this case, you can keep it or it can actually increase and decrease amount of details. Remember, those details won't be disappear. We retrieve this in our high frequency, but we can determine how much details we wanted. So right here, and normally when I work, I like to keep it my radius just a little bit above the threshold. So I'm, we can go around the look on the hands and other areas, and it seems like a skin right in this area, it's nice, it does not have it, those skin details, so it will look good. But at the same time, it allowed us to repair some effect.
So like, for example, right here, I can see a little bit discoloration, which we're going to fix in low frequency, but at the same time, we'll preserve the skin textures in a high frequency. So when we select, let's go press OK. And this time it's taken, it will create this low frequency. So next, what I want to do, it's work on a high frequency. So let's go to make it visible. And we'll go to utilize as image apply options for this. So let's go to image and we go to apply image option. So right here as apply image, we need select for source. Okay, and we are on right and title. So let's go select the layer now. And we're going to select the lower layer. So it's right here, it's against what we're doing. So we'll keep it as RGB. And next we want to change blending mode. The blending mode can be different depending on if you're using 8-bit or 16-bit. And for the 8-bit, you're using subtract. For 16, you have it add. Sometimes you may forget which one use it for what. But think about this. The poor 8-bit get poorer, so subtract. And rich, which 16-bit get richer. So in other case, we give you this small socialistic kind of refer to the image. So for this 8-bit image, we'll use it subtract. And as we're doing this subtract, we also want to be sure the invert is not enabled. So we want to invert if we're using add for 16-bit. Again, for this subtract for 8-bit, we're using scale 2 and offset 128. For the 16-bit, you'd need to have it offset 0. What does it mean? Because we have it on a 8 bit is a 256 levels of the gray and we'll just set offset 2 on the middle and use it 128 each way for the gray scale okay when we're done with this click ok so right here we're creating our high frequency at this point if we switch to linear light mode we'll have exactly the same image as we have before but right now we're separating on these two frequencies, lower and high frequency. The one thing I understand that even high frequency is look gray, they actually still have a color inside. So if we look, you can see it still preserve color. It's not a black and white and it's not dodge and burn. This is actually separation, but because the frequency is so high, we see more as a gray. For the purpose of retouching, I would recommend for you to keep it um, right now in normal mode. So it will help us to isolate and distinguish a little bit closer. So let's go to disable this high one and we'll work on a low. So the best way to do it is we'll create another layer. And let's go retouch. And we want to take this layer and a clip to the lower layer. So in this case, when we come closer, we can start fixing like leave it colorizations or some maybe larger type effects if we want to modify. To do this, we actually want to use it a mixer brush. And mixer brush tool, it's something combination between smudge tool and brush. So it's work very good this way. I want to be sure my wet set at least 10% or lower load 25 mix 25 or 23 and flow 25 if you notice i set everything kind of smooth so i will have a smooth nice effect i also want to be sure the sample or layers is checked in so let's go right here and for example i want to fix it some small right this area and maybe a little bit retouch right in a larger area so to do this i'll hold down alt key and i'll just simple color around that area and have it few strokes. You can see we already changed colors. Right here you can see we remove some of this redness. It's worked very well. If for this example person have a too much red nose, you kind of touch up or in some areas if they have it highlights too high you can sample areas and fix it some of those highlights or shadows areas as well. So in this case you can fix it some of those details. So like example, I can go inside here and just take a little bit samples of clothes and fix it some of those blemishes. 
Again, this is a little bit higher, uh, lower frequency, so we don't worry too much. Also, when you retouch, always remember to look on our hands, because in many cases, people will touch up very nice on the face, but hands and other kind of get lost in the process. So right here, for example, I'm fixing. Okay, we'll kind of fix a little bit right there. Okay, and we can fix it, look on the hands, like right here maybe. So we'll go select color and we'll just kind of try to fix some of those areas. I don't want to spend all um, kind of class to see how you can do it. Overall, it's a principles, so you can see we've done how you can modify it. Okay, so for example, we're down here. You know what? I don't like this element. So let's go select it and we can also kind of fix some of these. Okay, right here, maybe leave it. And same, for example, if we have a too bright spot, remember we can take and we can kind of make it a little bit nicer. Okay, and remove some right around there. Okay, so overall this is techniques. Remember we're using soft brush and we want to use be sure it's mixer brush tool. We're sampling colors by pressing down and hold Alt key. And our setting is 10, 25, 23 and 25 with sampling all layers. So when we're done with this, we can start working on a high frequency. So the one thing when we start working on high frequency, sometimes it's a little bit hard to see. So I like to bring this a little bit out. So for that, we're going to create a curve layer. We'll go switch this curve to the overlay. And we'll just take this point bottom, bring on the middle, and this bring to the top. This is one we stay there. It's only to help us to see. You can see right now how much we can already pop up and we can see those kind of things we want to fix it on the skin itself. Okay, let's to fix this, we also want to go ahead, create new layer. We'll go touching for the lowers. And same way, we want to clip this to the high. But here's interesting things. If we're using soft brush when we're using for the high, lower frequency, we want to use the hard edge and hard stamp tool for the high frequency. So in this case, I'm going to create stamp tool. I want to be it's hard and I want to be sure my opacity is 100%. So it's a very hard way. And right here, what are we going to do? We go be sure we also set current and below layer because we don't need it. Um, take our adjustment layer. So we want just current and below. And we'll just say we'll sampling right here and we just start stamping. You can see how it's disappearing. Okay, so we can go stamping around, fixing some areas. And again, this is just a technique, so you can see how overall done. Um, you don't want to have um, strokes, long strokes. What you want, it's like almost sampling and stamping, sampling and stamping. So you want to have this randomness of the skin without a visible repetition. Okay, so right here we fix this one. Okay, let's fix it some right here. If you have a hair, we can always go right there and fix it some hair effect. Again, all what I need to work right now is just about this hair right here. Okay, we can go. Okay, adjusting. Okay, we can also remove. And the same way, so you actually can go ahead and remove some wrinkles if you need it. Or other effects, um, like right here, we can go stamp slightly out 
this area okay and you can retouch other as well okay so let's go ahead and i want to just touch up a few more things okay remember we have the hands and as a texture of the hands we maybe want to touch up some areas and i think we had problem with one finger i fix it yep right here So we're gonna fix this finger. Okay, right there. Okay, and on a balloon, if you remember, we have some of this lighting. And right here you can see um, PLM very easy. So we're going to kind of remove some of this. Okay, so we'll go right there. Just add, I don't worry too much about this. Anytime if you want to actually change texture, you always can even click on balloon and add texture this way. So that will work as well, just fine. This is a nice way if you have it in the reflection somewhere like camera uh, showing or a person for photo shooting, you can remove some of those textures as well. Okay. We'll just leave it this one out. We could actually even take and totally remove if we need it. And we can do probably just as example. The balloon texture. Okay. And right here I think we have one more. So let's go around. So for the balloon texture, I don't worry too much about uh, lines. It's more worried about skin when I do this. Okay, we can do right here touch ups. Okay. And again, this is we don't smooth skin yet. We're just fixing and retouching some of those elements on the skin. Okay, you can look a little bit closer and you can see you can spend some time to fix this stuff. So when you're done, let's disable this one. We'll enable back and we'll take switch, remember, to liner light. So right here we have our image. And I'll just drag in other image with before. And we can compare, you can see before and after. So you can see right here, we modified. We still have a little bit of hair because if I'm right, it still be right in the low frequency so we can we can still take this one and just let's retouch slightly this point so we can kind of paint out almost So kind of remove it a little bit more, but overall you can see we have it remove. So before and after, like nice skin retouching. Okay, let's look on a balloon. Okay, before and after, we'll just remove some stuff. Or like for example, finger, same before and after. Again, the best parts, what we just did it right here, let's look. And look on this area with her nose example you see how the skin preserve we just remove some of this and it's happened because we separated we preserve our texture in a high frequency and we preserve some other higher um, kind of shapes in our low frequency so on this case by separation we can affect it but here's the things you're not um, just lock up to two frequencies, you actually can have it more than two. You also can separate on multiple levels based on different frequencies. So example right here, the image of the girl with the freckles and just if you for example want just remove the freckles but don't touch skin tones or um, overall shapes, you can separate on the low, middle and high fixes. And here's an example 
you can see I can go in the middle and just remove freckles without affecting like even blemishes to special uh, general areas or even hair. So right here you can see. Okay, I don't know why you want to do it. the freckles is actually benefit for this model. Just as an example, you can see um, with the separations and you can have it more than one. So you can separate just the hair or other effect. But this will be for more advanced of tutorials how you can have it multiple levels of the multiple frequency separations. And uh, in the end, I want to just give it a little bit history. If you think this frequency separations, it's new techniques, it's actually quite a bit old. And original was created by the Joseph Herrera, of course, not in Photoshop, but overall theory of the light and frequency separations. He also responsible for the um, discovering greenhouse effect and other. So overall, it's quite a bit old techniques. If you look when he was living and we'll just all knew it's very well forgotten old. So hopefully you remember and you use these techniques in your next retouching process. And please remember visit us on the web is www.geekatplay.com or subscribe on YouTube channel to receive notification when new videos is received.